well friends in the earlier modules we have discussed about various types of physical quantities their representation using a powerful mathematical tool called as coordinate systems now in this module we will pay proper attention to the discussion of spatial variation of various types of physical quantities by spatial variation i mean how the physical quantity change from point to point in practically every real life applications we observe many physical quantities which undergo a change from point to point and the question arise in our mind what is the result of such variations of the physical quantities from point to point can we not use any of the results related with such variations for real life applications these and many other questions arise in our mind we observe many types of physical quantities which undergo a variation for example while climbing up the hill we observe that the tracker gets tired because of steepness of the path so he or she tries to select a path which will be having less difficulty and having less steepness we can give another example for example when we consider a piece of magnet which is broken into pieces each piece exhibits the magnetic properties similar to the parent magnet or if you just go higher and higher from the surface of the earth we note that the barometric pressure changes if you take a wheel which is free to rotate in the river it is our observation that the wheel rotates about its axis with maximum speed if and only if placed in some particular position otherwise not when we observe all such things our mind starts thinking why it happens like this how it happens what is the mathematics behind it these and many other questions arise in our mind because we are studying science physical quantities do not undergo change only with space coordinates they undergo a change with many of the other quantities for example a physical quantities may undergo a change with respect to time t with mass density and so many others in this module however we are going to restrict our discussion only with the spatial change of the physical quantities that is how the physical quantities they undergo a change with coordinates of the point then another question arises that what type of change occurs what is the nature of the change a scalar physical quantities which undergo a change in different directions in different fashion will it give rise to a vector quantity the answer is yes another question if we are having a physical quantity which is a vector in nature then that quantity if it undergoes a change in different directions in different manner what is the result is the resultant quantity a scalar or a vector the answer is both so to account for all such results rather resultant physical quantities which may be scalar or vector due to spatial variations of a physical quantity can be accounted for using the concept of gradient divergence and curl of the physical quantities in this module we will understand how to account for it and these concepts can be better understood with the help of an operator which is very famous and known as del operator 
the various phenomena which you observe in nature around us can be accounted for using the differential equations. If you want to understand any interrelation between various parts of a physical system, those can be modeled using differential equations. In this module, we will see about some differential equations which involve the operator del and its counterpart del square. It is very important for a beginner to know about the operator del and that is why the main aim of the module is centered around the various mathematical and computational aspects related with the operator del. After completing this module, you will be able to understand the concept of gradient, divergence and curl. To know about the del operator in different coordinate systems, to study the mathematical tools for computation of divergence, curl and gradient, to know about the vector identities useful for minimizing the mathematical labor in theoretical physics. You will be able to learn about visualization of mathematical equations for real life applications. You must be curious to know about the term del operator. Before that, let us see what is meant by an operator. Mathematically, an operator may be described as a mapping from one vector space or module to another. Forget about this mathematical definition. In simple language, operator operates on numbers, mathematical functions representing a physical system or a physical quantity, maybe a scalar or vector to give desired outcome. Variety of operators will be found listed in literature. Operator used in pure and applied mathematics are the main two types of operators mainly concerned to us. Whenever we talk about arithmetic, addition, subtraction, multiplication, all these operations we are doing right from our school days. Integration, differentiations are involved in college level studies. These are the operators in pure mathematics. As far as applied mathematics is concerned, we deal with estimation of several types of quantities. For example, in classical and quantum mechanics or probability theory, we have to deal with some higher level of operations. So, these operators are represented by using some symbols. Many of the symbols are also familiar to us. For example, addition, subtraction, integration, differentiation, etc. Many times in quantum mechanics, the operators are represented by giving a cap over it. As mentioned, we are familiar with the symbols of the following operators in arithmetic. Out of them, modulus, comparison, these are the operators which are used in programming as well. As mentioned earlier, we use the operation of differentiation or integration in calculus which is encountered practically in every branch of physics. We are familiar with the notations of these differential and integral operators as well. We observe multiple mathematical operators used to create complex mathematical expressions out of simple expressions. We can generate many examples in support of this fact. For example, A is equal to 5 plus 2 into 7 minus 89 modulo 13 divided by 9 etc. Or in two dimensional functions, we may construct f of x y is equal to f1 of x multiplied by f2 of y plus f3 of x y divided by f4 of x etc. See the complexity and that is why it is said that multiple use of mathematical operators can create complex mathematical expressions which are involved in the study of physics. Operators in quantum physics is an inherent part related with estimation of average values 
of various types of physical quantities. For example, total energy of the system, the momentum of the particle, etc. The quantum mechanical systems are represented by what is called as a wave function, say psi. If you are interested in knowing the total energy of the particle, we have to operate an operator H cap called as Hamiltonian operator on the wave function. So, when H cap operates on psi, we get the energy value of the system. See at the equation Q psi n is equal to Q n psi n. What this equation stands for? It is an equation involving quantum mechanical operator Q. It represents the fact that the quantum mechanical system represented by psi n will yield an eigenvalue Q n corresponding to its state psi n. Given an algebraic function say f of x y and an operator say d cap, we can obtain the result when d cap operates on f of x y mathematically as follows. The steps will be clear because all of you know the process of differentiation and hence need not be explained. But when operator op operates on a function, what is the result? So, that we can get and it is clear from the slide. Now, let us discuss about the main hero of this module famous as del operator also known as nabla. Then del dot del which is called the del square this is a scalar operator. It is also highly useful to study the spatial change of directional variation of physical quantities. So, let us discuss about these two operators now. Let us see how these operators are represented in different coordinate system. To start with, let us consider the Cartesian coordinate system. In this coordinate system, their representation is as follows. Del and del square, these are the two operators which you are talking about. Note the presence and absence of unit vectors in the expressions for the two. It be noted that in literature, the del operator also known as nabla can be found as expressed in different ways due to the choice of representation of unit vectors and also the variables. The expression for del and del square in cylindrical coordinate system are as shown. Do not confuse with the use of r phi z instead of rho phi z as the coordinates in literature because various authors they use their own notations. The expressions in spherical coordinate system are as shown. Note the compactness used in the expression for del square in the first term on the right hand side of del square. Now, let us try to understand the three concepts namely gradient, divergence and curl, the mathematical way or the, of their computations and their applications and some numerical examples. First of all, let us discuss about gradient. We observe many physical quantities changing with the coordinates. A physical quantity may undergo a change with distance, the changes may be the same or different in different directions. In such a case, we talk about the gradient of that physical quantity. There are many examples which you can give in support of this or to understand this concept. Whenever water is flowing through a river, we observe that the velocity of the water layers changes with height or depth. As you just climb up the hill, the pressure changes. When you heat a rod by using some source of heat, then the temperature along the length of the rod is different at different points. Thus, we can give many such examples where the physical quantity is undergoing a change with distance. In such a case, in general, we talk about velocity gradient, 
pressure gradient, temperature gradient, potential gradient, concentration gradient, so mean, so on and so forth. The point which I discussed earlier, let us try to understand with the help of some diagrams or graphs. Here we see a suicidal waveform wherein the magnitude y changes with distance x. We can see three regions having slope dy by dx being positive, 0 or negative. Note that here y may be taken to represent different types of physical quantities. So we say that if the slope is positive, it is a positive gradient. If the slope is negative, it is a negative gradient. If the slope is 0, we say that it is a local minimum or maximum. In general, we may think of one dimensional curves to represent ghats or a hill wherein the car driver or tracker will experience the effect of change in slope of the path. Can we relate the situation in which water is moving down the mountain in the form of a stream or river? Such observations can be able to judge the slope of the region around the flow of water from the top of a hill or a mountain. Here indirectly we are using the concept of gradient. Imagine a point charge plus Q. The electrostatic potential V due to it may vary from point to point. The equipotential surfaces corresponding to it are concentric spheres with charge Q at its center. We observe that as you go away from the charge, the potential changes. Can you associate this fact with the term gradient? Just think, the temperature along the length of a metal rod being heated at one of its end varies with distance as seen in the diagram. Thus we say that there is a temperature gradient dt by dx. So far we have considered the examples in one dimension. We can think of the examples in two dimensions as well. We may think of temperature distribution on the surface of a metal plate as an example of two dimensional problem. Variation in temperature can be different along x and y directions. This is also an example of gradient. In the rectangular coordinate system, the gradient del phi is computed as shown. Note that gradient is a vector quantity. It can be shown that gradient points in the direction of its maximum change. Now let us see the gradient in cylindrical coordinate system. The expression is as shown. It can be easily understood that expression for gradient in any coordinate system can be obtained if you know the expression for del in that system. Can you tell what will be the expression for gradient in spherical coordinate system? Here is the answer. In earlier modules, we have discussed various types of operations like addition, taking scalar product, vector product, etc. Now, since gradient is a vector quantity, we can perform all types of such operations with gradients as well. As an illustration, here is a vector product of two gradients, f1 and f2 are the two functions under consideration. Now let us discuss another concept of divergence. As an example, let us consider a tank having some water in it with two taps. One tap for allowing the water to enter the tank and the other tank from which the water goes out of the tank. Now if the water entering the tap or pouring into the tank is more than the water which is going out of the tank, then obviously the level of water or the amount of water in the tank will go on increasing. On the other hand, if the water going out of the tank is more than the water which is poured in, then 
naturally the level or the water contents in the tank will go on decreasing. Thus, what is the net change in the amount of water in the given volume V? That is the point which we have to pay attention. So, we say that if the net change in the water is more or positive, then the divergence is positive. If the net change in the water is less, then we say that the divergence is negative. Thus, in divergence, we talk about the net change in the physical quantity per unit volume. Of course, this is a very crude level example. We can mathematically discuss it with more rigor. As before, let us see what are the expressions in different coordinate system. Here we have an expression for divergence in the rectangular coordinate system. If we are having a physical quantity A bar, then its divergence is written as del dot A bar. It is expressed in terms of the components of the vector along the three coordinate axis. Let us see what is the expression in the rectangular coordinate system in the case of a vector V bar is equal to I cap V1 plus J cap V2 plus K cap V3. The divergence of V can be computed by using the rules of the dot product which you have studied in the first model and the result is as shown. Divergence for A bar in spherical coordinate system can also be obtained by using the scalar product rules and the expression finally we get is as shown. Here we have the expression in cylindrical coordinate system for divergence of A. Now given a vector A bar, how to find out the divergence? We must have a practice of solving such problems. For that purpose, let us see a numerical example to find the divergence of the given vector. The steps are self-explanatory. Now after discussing the divergence, let us see an important concept of curl. Just think about the word curl. When you say that curl your fingers of right hand, immediately we experience that there is some sort of movement and the moment is in some particular direction. If we consider a wheel free to rotate in a water about an axis, then we observe that the wheel rotates with the maximum possible speed if and only if placed in some particular direction. So the rotation of the wheel is depending upon the direction of the axis, the plane of the wheel, etc. So, there are many physical quantities which undergo such motion and to account for such a motion or movement of the particles or the charges contained therein is accounted for by finding out the curl of that quantity. If the curl of the physical quantity is 0, then there will not be any rotation and we call that quantity as irrotational. And if the curl is non-zero, then we can say that the quantity is rotational. So, curl of a vector and rotational vector, they are similar terms used to represent the same effect. Please note that the magnitude of the curl gives the net circulation and its direction gives information about the axis of rotation. As before, let us see the mathematical expression for curl. Here we have an expression in rectangular coordinate system. 
curl of a bar is represented by putting a cross between del and the given vector. Thus, del cross a bar is equal to a determinant which is of 3 by 3 order. Here we have the unit vectors i cap, j cap, k cap as the elements of the first row, then the differential, partial differential operators dabba by dabba x, dabba by dabba y and dabba by dabba z at the elements in the second row. Third row contains the components of the vector a bar along x, y and z axis. We know how to evaluate the determinant. So, if you simplify it, you will get the expression for rectangular coordinate system for curl. Similarly, the curl for expression in spherical coordinate system can be obtained by using the determinant as shown below. Note here the similarity in the format of the determinant. The expression for curl in cylindrical coordinate system is as shown. One must know all these expressions for curl in different coordinate systems. They are highly useful in finding out the curl when the given vector is expressed either in rectangular, cylindrical or spherical coordinate systems. Mathematical exercise is highly useful in having a mastery over the computational aspects about such quantities. As an example, let us find how to find out the curl of the given vector. The steps are as shown below. In electrodynamics or in mechanics, we are dealing with the force fields. The forces are of different type. First type is conservative, second is dissipative and the remaining forces are called as other forces. So, the total force F acting on the system can be represented as a sum of three, Fc the conservative force, Fd the dissipative force and Fo the other forces. Conservative force can be determined by taking the curl of the physical quantity. If the curl of the force is 0, then that is a conservative force. Dissipative forces are also to be paid proper attention to. Friction, for example, is a dissipative force. Conservative field is of very much importance in electrostatics. If a curl of a vector A is 0, then the vector a bar is said to be conservative and mathematically we can prove that any force field varying inversely with square of the distance is conservative. Electrostatic field is given by q upon 4 pi epsilon 0 r square. So, it is a field which is varying inversely with the square of the distance. It is conservative. Conservative field can be described in various ways. For example, if the work done in displacing a charge in the force field A bar is independent of the path chosen, then the vector field A bar is said to be conservative. For example, let us consider the displacement of an electric charge from point A to point D as shown. If we displace it from A to B, then B to C and C to D that is by the path A, B, C, D then the work done will be say W1. Instead of the path A, B, C, D if we displace it first from A to P then from P to D that is the displacement is via A, P, D let W2 be the work done along this path. If W1 is equal to W2, then we say that the vector field A bar is conservative. That is work done does not depend upon the path chosen. The third way of describing the conservative field is 
like this if we take a charge say q and circulate it through a closed path and if it is observed that the total work done is zero then we say that the force field is conservative and hence the line integral of the electric field through a closed path if it is zero then we say that the electric field is conservative and in the first module the second module we have seen the necessary mathematics for example the line element line integrals etc in different coordinate system so the knowledge about it can be highly useful in estimating the necessary integrals and to predict whether the given field is conservative or not so far we have discussed about the different concepts like divergence gradient and curl which involves the use of del and we also seen that the expressions for del they are different in different coordinate systems the question arises how to convert the operator del from one coordinate system to the other so let us see some points regarding it or rather the procedural steps for interconversion of del operator from cartesian to cylindrical system as an example there are some steps which are to be followed step number 1 is note the expression for del in cartesian coordinate system step number 2 note the relations between coordinates in cylindrical and cartesian coordinate system these are the two things which we can definitely note the step number 3 which is of vital importance is to note the relation between unit vectors in the two coordinate systems step number 4 find the values of i cap into dy by dy by x by using the following expression dy by dy by x will be equal to dy by dy by rho into dy by rho by dy by x plus dy by dy by phi of dy by phi by dy by x plus dy by dy by phi of dy by z by dy by x rho phi and z being the coordinates in cylindrical coordinate system as before find j cap into dy by dy by y using the given expression the second last step will be to find the expression for k cap dy by dy by z using the given expression step number 7 substitute the values of i cap dy by dy by x j cap dy by dy by y k cap dy by dy by z in the expression for del in cartesian coordinate system and simplify by rearranging proper terms then the last step that is step number 8 will be using the relation between unit vectors in two coordinate systems to obtain the expression for del in cylindrical coordinate system note that here the rearrange meant of the terms is very much crucial sometimes you must have noted that the very important information which we must have is the relation between unit vectors between different coordinate systems so the question arises how to find out this relation that is interconversion of unit vectors between coordinate systems as an example let us consider how to convert unit vectors from cartesian to polar coordinate system the procedure is very simple in the first module we have discussed the concept of resolution of a vector along a given direction and 
the elementary concepts of vector addition. By using these two together, we can obtain the expression for relation between unit vectors in Cartesian and polar coordinate systems as shown. Note that the relations between the unit vectors can be finally put in the form of a matrix equation. The inverse of a matrix can be highly useful to change these equations from polar coordinate to Cartesian coordinate system. There are many mathematical theorems which involve the operators del and del square. Let us see some of the important theorems. The fundamental theorem of gradient is as shown. The line integral of the gradient from A to B is the difference between the values of the function at the two limits. As an example, let us find out the expression for electrostatic potential difference between two points. We know that the electrostatic potential phi at a point x is given by phi x is equal to minus integral from infinity to x of E bar dot dl bar where dl bar is the line element. The potential difference between two points A and B is given by phi of B minus phi of A, which will be the potential at B minus potential at A. Just have a look at the mathematical steps and you will find that the final expression gives the potential difference phi B minus phi of A equal to negative of the integral e dot dl within limits a and b. Thus finally, using fundamental theorem of gradient discussed earlier, we can prove that integral a to b of the gradient of phi is equal to minus integral a to b of the vector e both the integrals being the line integrals and therefore del phi is equal to minus e bar or e bar is equal to minus del phi. From this we see that the electric field is the negative gradient of the scalar function phi. Any field which is derived from some other quantity from that we can define a term which is a general term as potential. Here electric field can be derived using a scalar quantity phi. So phi is called as the electrostatic potential. Another theorem is famous and called as Stokes theorem which relates the surface integral to the Klein integral. Let C be the boundary of a surface S and A bar be a field, vector field, then the theorem says that line integral of f bar over the close contour C, which is the boundary of the surface S, equals the surface integral of the curl of the vector field over that surface. This theorem also has many applications. As an application of Stokes theorem, let us see how the conservative nature of electrostatic field can be established using Stokes theorem. We already know that for a static electric field, Klein integral of electric field over a closed path is 0. Now using Stokes theorem, the line integral can be converted into surface integral and we have line integral over the contour C of E is equal to 0 which is equal to del cross E dot ds. Hence, we have del cross E equal to 0 and thus the electrostatic field is conservative. One more important theorem in theoretical physics is known as Gauss divergence theorem which relates the volume integral with surface integral and it reads like this. Volume integral 
of del dot A is equal to the surface integral of A, where S is the surface enclosing the given volume V. Note that in literature, there are different ways of expressing this theorem. Triple integral or double integral are also sometimes used. As an application of Gauss divergence theorem, let us see how the total number of electric lines of force flowing out through a closed surface due to a charge Q can be found out. If you consider the volume integral of divergence of E over a volume V, then by using Gauss divergence theorem, we can convert it as a surface integral as shown. Finally, by using the expression for E, which is Q upon 4 pi epsilon 0 r square into r cap, we can prove that the surface integral gives the value Q upon epsilon. There are many differential equations involving del and del square. As an example, let us consider the first equation known as equation of continuity del dot j is equal to minus dabba rho by dabba t. Please note that this is a fundamental equation in physics. It must be satisfied in every physically acceptable situations. Interpretation of current density j and the charge density rho depends upon the system. In quantum mechanics, the divergence of j is given in terms of the wave function of psi and the gradient of psi as shown. Please note that here the current density j corresponds to the number of particles crossing the potential barrier at the boundary. Another important differential equation is Poisson's equation. We know that in electrodynamics we are dealing with the charge densities, current densities, etc., and the fields which are arising out of that. The equation which relates the charge density and the corresponding fields in terms of potential is known as Poisson's equation. It is given by del square phi is equal to minus 4 pi rho, where rho is the charge density and the potential is expressed by phi. It is a differential equation, so rho and phi corresponds to the same point. As far as electrodynamics is concerned, Poisson's equation takes the form del square v is equal to minus rho upon epsilon 0, where the v stands for potential, rho stands for the charge density. Epsilon 0 may be replaced by epsilon if the medium is other than free space. When the charge density is 0, Poisson's equation reduces to Laplace equation. Laplace equation has wide applications. It is useful for solving potentials problem in charge free region and it should be noted that the standard solutions of Laplace equation in different coordinate systems are already available and those can be used to solve the problem having a particular symmetry either cylindrical, rectangular or spherical as seen in unit number 2. Maxwell's equations in differential form inherently use the operator del the concept of divergence and curl. Rather, these equations are called as source density and circulation density equations because we know that a divergence is source density and curl of the fields, it corresponds to the circulation densities. An important equation in quantum mechanics involving del square is the Schrodinger's equation. Quantum mechanics deals with microscopic particles. We are interested in knowing the wave function, the energy eigenvalues and many other things. So, we solve 
Schrodinger's equation. The diffusion equation, it is very important in the study of semiconductor physics. So, the diffusion equation also involves the operators del and del square. Whenever we talk about antennas, then the gauge invariance that is a very important topic which we have to study. There we talk about the vector potential A bar, scalar potential phi and so many things. The equations which we derive must be invariant under gauge transformations. So, for example, here we observe that del dot a bar equal to 0, where a bar is called the vector potential. So, the equations they involve del. We can find several such differential equations involving del. Some more examples will be given below try to understand what are the names of these differential equations. Here we are having an equation which involves the scalar potential phi. The equation involves the operator del square. We have talked about gauge invariance, we have talked about the electrostatic potentials in radiation. So, these are some of the steps which involve little algebra and the operators del, the concept of divergence and so many other things. Oh, what is this equation? Can you read it? Can you understand? What is the name of this equation? How to simplify it? It involves del dot del cross a, del cross del phi, del square a and so many other things. Please note that we have to account for or we have to study all these relations which we call as vector identities and such complicated equations will be dealt with in higher level studies. In this module, in this course, we are not going to bother much about such complicated expressions, but one must know that occurrence of del, del square, vector identities, the concepts like divergence, curl, etc., they are of vital importance in the study of theoretical physics. Can you give some more examples of differential equations or theorems which involve del and the del square operators? I think it will be a very good exercise to search for such with the help of internet sources. As mentioned earlier, while solving differential equations using theorems, we have to use different types of vector identities. Here some of the important identities are listed. Those will be highly useful in reducing the mathematical labor in the theoretical discussion or derivation on some particular result. Some of the vector identities, they do not involve del. Some of the vector identities, they do involve the del operator. Here is a list of the vector identities which involve del operator. It is very important to visualize the mathematical equation for real life application. Many of the physicists, they have established several mathematical equations or expressions 
For example, if you just see Maxwell's equation, del cross E is equal to minus daba B bar by daba T. Mathematically, it's okay. But we have to ask the question, what does this equation indicate for real life applications? If we just give a little thought over the dimensions or definitions of the physical quantities involved, then we can definitely get some solution as far as the real life applications are concerned. We know that B stands for magnetic induction, that is magnetic lines of force crossing per unit area. So it has to do something with area, magnetic lines of force and time. It clearly indicates the fact that if we consider some conductor whose area is A and the magnetic lines of force passing through it, they are varied with respect to time t. Then as a result of such time variation in the magnetic lines of force associated with the coil can generate del cross of E. What is del cross of E? Curl of E is nothing but the variation, rather special variation of electric field at that particular point. So, when the plane of the coil is rotated in the magnetic field, we can have a change in the magnetic lines of force associated with the plane of the coil with respect to time t. And as a result, we get space varying electric field. Space varying electric field can give rise to the circulation of the electric charges because the electric field in the plane of the coil is changing from point to point and such a changing electric field can give rise to circulation of the electric charge. Circulating electric charges, they give rise to current and that is why we say that there is an electromotive force generated in the coil giving rise to current. This is an application. So, we can generate DC, AC, etc. by making proper arrangement of the brushes in the experimental or instrumental setup. Well friends, let us summarize the whole module. In this module, we have discussed the spatial variation of physical quantities in terms of new concepts like divergence, curl and gradient. These concepts need the knowledge of an important operator called as del operator. Del operator can be expressed in different coordinate systems in different ways. For it, we must know the relation between unit vectors in different coordinate system as well as the relation between coordinates of a point in different coordinate systems. There are many differential equations in physics which involve the use of del and del square. The operator del square which is called the Laplacian is also of much more importance in many of the physics problems.